what's up everyone so today is a part two of the Coleman Powermate generator with a Tecumseh that had a Warren engine um, I don't exactly remember how much I spent on this it wasn't too bad I well I got it for free and so far I got the head gasket the uh, it's escaping me. The gasket for right there, the sump gasket, crankcase. Yeah, there the crankcase gasket. And I have the rings. They will be coming here. Uh, I think in the next day, or maybe it's already in my mailbox. I didn't check it yet. Um, either way, I want to get it started. I know I'm not going to finish it today anyway, so I at least want to get some of it done. Um, now, I don't want to say this is not the proper way of doing this, but this is kind of the best case scenario way of doing this. If the piston, which I looked up and tried to see if I can find one, I did, I found a aftermarket one, which everyone in the review said it's basically one step above hot garbage. And I found the old new stock, but they were insanely expensive, and I wasn't about to spend that amount of money. I forget exactly how much it was. It was like $110, $90, something like that. Maybe there's some out there that are cheaper. I mean, I didn't necessarily spend all day looking for a piston, but in general, you probably should be replacing the piston if it's scored or anything, that's a definite. But I'm just going to put new rings in, hone it, check the valves, um, clean up everything real good, uh, lap the valves. Yeah, and I'm hoping that's going to bring up our compression so the engine will actually run properly. You know, it, it, you can tell this is lived a good life. I mean, it's not dirty. I mean, besides what's... It's in a garage, so it's gonna get a little dirty in there. Um, it's not a bad little unit. It's just... What, Tecumseh went on business in 2006? I don't remember. It's been well over 15 years now. Um, so, these are... I don't want to say going extinct, but they're they're not as easy to find parts for anymore, and that's causing them to kind of dwindle. But, you know, what can you say? If I can get it running, I don't know, in my area, this is a good $200 generator, maybe more, maybe $250. So, I think I have somewhere around, around $50 in parts in it so far. So, if I put in the labor, and I do sell it for 250 200 bucks. that's not bad. But if I had to buy a new piston, let's say another $100, then the rings, which uh, I have already, obviously. Well, potentially in my mailbox. So that's total 150 Let's say I only get 200 out of it. I get $50, and it's been a couple hours worth of work. Eh, that's not really worth it to me so the same token if this doesn't work then it's really just scrap so <clears throat> I guess my point is the reason why I did this is I know this power head runs I mean we saw that or this makes power so worst case scenario I can find like a Vanguard thing and attach it. It's basically the exact same thing. Um, the power head on that one is like one number off on the model number, so I'm sure it's more or less the same. And I could put it on something else. So, worst case scenario, I spent $60 for a decent frame that has wheels, um, a good power generating head, and I just have to find an engine somewhere. So, those aren't too hard to find. Eventually I can do that, and they're not too expensive. 
I wouldn't be any worse off than if I tried to rebuild it entirely and then who knows, even with a new piston, maybe the bore is so worn out that the only real way to do it is take it to a shop, have them machine it. Um, I don't even know what else. I mean, I suppose you could do some type of sleeve in there. I, I don't really know. That's above my skill level on this type of mechanic, but... Um, and then you would have to put oversized rings in, and then where do you find those? It, I'm sure you could, but it would it be worth it? It just is getting to the point where it's useless. So, enough babbling. First things first is we need to take off this back piece, which is just four bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and bring you back. Took everything off, and... Um, well, the four bolts, I'm also taking off some of the mounting hardware for the feet. Brushes look fine in there, so that's good. This should just come off. It might need a little persuasion. I mean, it's been on there for a long time. And now the windings look burnt or anything, but yet again, I, I'm not too concerned over the power output of this generator. Now, what I do need to do, what I'd fail to do, is put something underneath, probably around here, to kind of catch it, because once I pull that off, there's really nothing holding the engine from going. Okay, I'm just going to test aluminum block that I welded up a while ago for a fun little chore. And it's actually turning into a good, useful piece of garage equipment. Block is where it needs to be. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. Down here, it's kind of getting hung up. At least that side's done. It's definitely a lot easier with two people. That's done. Man, that's annoying. So, the next point is just to kind of look at everything. I don't think I damaged anything, but uh, it looks like it's just dust. Yeah, it's fine. This is a real cumbersome part. What I'm going to do next. So I'm going to tip this so this is facing up and take this bolt out. I need to tap. Well, 
Let's look and see if there is any type of thread in there. I don't think so. I'm not that lucky, but who knows. First rule of building a generator. No bolt is the same size as the one previous to the one that you had to remove to get to where you are right now. Rule number one. Rule number two. It's basically the same thing. So, I don't want to say we're in a predicament here, but we are in a tad bit of a predicament. This next part, um, I need the head of uh, the cylinder, excuse me, to stop moving. Now, I guess we don't need this anymore. Usually you just put rope in the cylinder and then the head will just be there to kind of keep it in place while well, there's no head. Um, so let's look and see if there's any threads. There is not. So I'm going to tap this. I'm going to put the head on, put some rope in there, and then we should be able to crank down on it a little bit easier. So got it done, kind of. So I, I kind of want to explain what's going to happen next. You have two options here. As you s actually, let's go back in. Let's take a marker. Let's mark how much we have. So. What we are going to do is, this is a tapered shaft, and on this tapered shaft, this has a press fit. It's the same principle as a flywheel, except the unfortunate part about this is, if you pull on this the wrong way, you're going to damage it. And unlike a flywheel that's usually cast iron, or at the very least aluminum, you know, if you break a fin off, it's not the end of the world. If you break this though, you might as well just stop right now because now you have a bad generator head with a potential bad motor. So, eh. So what we're needing to do is we have a couple options. One, we can get a rod very similar in length like this one. Or, because I found, unless it's a very stout rod or you have a very precise thickness, good possibility is just going to bend. I personally like to put a little marble in here and tip it up so this right here is facing up and then put a whole bunch of Teflon on here. You put the oil so it's barely not overflowing on the top of uh, this little uh, freshly tapped area that we've done and then you put the bolt on and when I mean Teflon, I, I know a lot of it, I mean enough where you kind of question if there's even going to be thread engagement. Then when you press down, all the pressure of the fluid will then press against the tapered shaft, then releasing this. Nine times out of ten, that's kind of a, um, a, a uh, abrupt experience, like it just pops, just kind of like a flywheel. So, it's not for the squeamish. But let's see how many threads we have here. That's a decent amount. Okay, so let's say the bottom line. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half, eight. Okay, that's not too bad at all. That, that's more than enough. So I'm going to tip it up, put some oil in here, and then a little cross our fingers and hopefully it works. So like I said, this has a potential of coming off fairly rapidly. Um, borderline violent but I, I'm sure it's okay I have the Teflon on there you're in a safe place in the case it decides to start rolling now for this you do want to use a power tool uh, if you push if you're using um, like a ratchet you might not create 
the the speed that you need to really do this because maybe the oil starts to seep out you want to do this fast and then that usually gives you the good result so let's give this a try it can take a couple attempts you know hopefully the first time works but maybe the second time who knows And we didn't have enough Teflon. I'm going to put some more on. Again. I don't think so. Nope. These can be a little stubborn. Well, I guess we just try it again. So hopefully the sound is going to get us here, but I looked at the old um, bolt I was using, and it looked like it was a little stripped. I don't know if I did that with just doing this process, or if it came that way. I'm not really sure, but it wouldn't surprise me either way. So I put a new bolt, new Teflon. I started a little bit more. In fact... Yeah, it, it's pretty good. So let's go ahead and give this a try again. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those. There was so much pressure from the oil that literally shot the bolt right out when I took it out. So, I'm going to do this and we'll just keep looking. Okay, it's a couple days later. I got tired of doing the oil. So what I did, is I cleaned it out as best as I could. Went to the hardware store, spent about $3 on a 5 16 rod. Cut it to length so I have about hmm, 3 or 4 um, threads that I can go in before it the bolt actually touches the rod. Put the rod in there. The bolt that came or the yeah the bolt that came out of it was a quarter inch. So I shouldn't be in the threads. So I should be over it. So I shouldn't have to worry about damaging them. Five sixteenths fit perfect in there. So I'm just gonna crank down it. My only worry is that I'm hoping I'm not going to damage the threads I made. So I'm just gonna try slow. Once I get like one or two good ones in there, then I'll really crank down on it. Don't know what happened. It started going sideways. I'm thinking I just don't have enough. Okay, do you want the good news first or the bad news first? The good news is it finally came off. Um, took a little persuasion, but it did. And to be honest, I was going to give up on it. I was literally tearing it apart to, uh, um, to be recycled, doing the video and calling it good. But then I just turned it around and because this end wasn't connected to anything and I forgot to um, kind of gracefully set it down it this piece had hit the aluminum block I had and it just fell off <laughs> so this this sudden shock I'm sure um, the unfortunate part is Unfortunately, when it fell off, there's a few gashes in there. I have no idea if it's going to work after. I'm hoping it will. It doesn't look broken, it just looks bent. But if it does run, I'm not going to sell it. I'll probably just keep it as a backup. You know, that, that wouldn't be right to sell it. But either way, 
moving forward and onward. Um, I'm going to take off the bolts in there, take this off, I'm going to empty the oil, and then we will tear it apart. Okay, it's a couple hours later, and I let it drain the entire time. Still not going to take it all out, but whatever. Helped my neighbor do some maintenance on his car because it was having a real hard time yesterday, and yeah. I'll just put it this way. You need to change your oil more than once every two years when you drive it six days a week, 20 minutes every day, one way to your work. It was disgusting. When routine maintenance it greatly improves your uh, efficiency in your vehicle to that degree, because he's, when we drove around just to kind of make sure everything's okay, he said he noticed a pretty big difference. You need to reevaluate your schedule. Just saying. But auto maintenance is out of the realm of this video. There's only two types of covers that come off really easy and really hard. So far to date, I've never run across the easy one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Looks like it's set. Oh. I need to jinx myself more like like that more often. So this is the low oil sensor. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, if you did want to, this would be the time to take it out. I don't want to take it out. Generators don't really die for many reasons except for lack of oil or their power head going out or I mean, if you're really lucky you'll get one which is a bad carb but usually they're fine but low oil is a very common problem with them Why is that not coming out? Well, I need to take the head bolts out anyway. Um, so you could take the piston out, so I'm gonna do that. So I got the cam out. Um, the valve springs in this is insanely stiff. So it's putting a lot of pressure. Uh, maybe don't take those out yet may not even have to, but um, got it out, I'm going to take out the piston next, take out the bolts holding the rod in, and then we'll push it out. So I'll go ahead and take the bolts out and bring it back. That was ridiculous. I've never had to take, um, use a ratchet and a, like a bar to help take out those before, but uh, anyway, done. They were insanely tight. Even that's a little rough. Is everything about this engine going to be hard to work on?
Mm-hmm. Maybe a handle of the it's rubber should be fine, right? Almost out. Okay. I know. Maybe we'll. That's nah, just going to fall again, but. Awkward thing ever. I'm just like squishing my hand. Hmm, I'll work on this. So, when you do this, here's the new rings. We're gonna want to um, kind of check the gaps beforehand. So, you put them in the bore, take a feeler gauge, measure the gap, and see if it's okay. I'm going to do that with these before I put them on. But let's just take these off and look at it first. Sometimes these pliers work. Helps if you use them right. The piston itself looks fine. It doesn't look like it's worn or anything. I mean, it looks like a used piston, don't get me wrong. But, I've seen worse. So that's the top. I think, oh, something to remember. This arrow faces towards the valves. And then the open end also faces towards the valves. Just those tiny little things that you don't think about you should remember, but you probably should. And there's a lot of garbage in there. This one could be a little difficult because it has, it's a little different. It's a lot thicker. I don't know if that's supposed to come apart. I guess it wouldn't probably wouldn't matter too much if it does. But it did. So let's go might clean my hands. And then let us check the rings. So it's gonna be a little hard to tell, but you just put the ring in, take the top of the piston so it's flat, push the ring down a little bit and the gap is actually right here. The reason why you do this is the ring, if it gets too hot, well, when it gets to operating temperature, I should say, will expand. If it expands too much, the gap isn't enough to support it, it can pretty much grenade itself and just completely score everything up and just make it nasty. 
So this is five thousand, so it's pretty loose. Let's try ten. Ten will ten I think ten's the magic number actually right there. I'll go check the what it's supposed to be. So the spec says between seven thousands and seventeen thousands. Um so yeah, this is 17 on the old one, and it's a lot looser. Um, let's go up a little bit. Let's do, let's make mine 20. Sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, it will fit, but it's a little tight. Um, so it's definitely out of spec. Not just one of them. So I'm gonna put the rings in, and we'll put the piston back in. That's always a scary part. Um, this one has no. This is the oiling ring. Has no up or down on it that yeah nothing at least nothing the instruction says mm. do this from the top don't want to scrape it so these are hardened which is a way of saying that they're brittle they can break and when they do break it's like glass, it's like the, they're sharp. So you want to be very careful. You can cut yourself on this. Why are these pliers not wanting to accept this? Here we go. Um, I'm just going to put this one in first. Something I did notice when taking them off, um, well, when I took the piston out, I should say, is I feel like the gaps are lined up. You don't want that. You don't want anything like that. You want them to be opposite of each other. Because as compression builds and blows past them, you want it to have a longer path. So you don't end up having any problems. There we go. Just make sure everything is good. Looks good. The spring looks to be in its groove and the entire thing. Okay, we're good. Next one, so if you look in here, there's one that has like a slope and one that has a notch. The notch is the second one, or the middle one, per these instructions, you can kind of tell, and the notch is facing down. Here we go, right there. So it's like this. This is the scary part. Let's uh, put these a little closer to the end of the pliers. That should do on that side. And that side, perfect. You know what, let's just do this by hand.
go. Oh, oh, a little lower. There we are. Okay, next per the instructions. The one with the ridge, and the ridge is facing up. So like this. It doesn't seem like this was, the rings are very worn, but it was out of spec. Let's try the pliers. I need to get a better pair of pliers. Definitely need to get a better pair of pliers. There we go. Okay, we have our notches, our grooves are in the right place. And clean it. And then next is we're going to hone this, um, the actual bore or the cylinder. So Get that started. So now we're on to honing. I put a little WD 40 down there, wiped it all around, put a little marble on the actual honing stones. So basically what we're doing is we're putting little gouges in there for oil to kind of hide and allow some, you know, better lubrication. If you have a worn cylinder, this can help. If you have a scratched cylinder, this can help a little bit. I mean, it's not a cure-all, but if you have a minor scratch, it could potentially help fix it. So I'm going to do that a little longer bring you back. Put the piston in there. Um, this is a spring ring compressor. Basically, it just compresses the ring so you can put it in a little easier. That's a theory. And tighten it down, made it so it's flat, holding it down so it's nice and level with the head. I oiled the inside of the ring compressor, the piston, and the cylinder so it's nice and oily in there. You could use motor oil, I used marble. You can use assembly lube. You just take something soft like a hammer. Mm -mm. Sometimes this doesn't like to play well with others. And this is one of those times. this occurs, you kind of have to press in the ring to make sure it doesn't gouge anything or start over. I think I'm going to start over, bring it back when it's done. Okay, put the connecting rod in, um, just finishing up some final details and we'll put the cam in, I'll do that. Um, the cam's pretty easy. You find the mark and then you put the mark, lift the mark that's on this gear, on the cam, you put it in, you close it up and that's it. But this is important. I hooked it up. These have to be torqued down to 210 inch pounds. Probably if you're tightening. Um, which is basically the complete max of where my torque wrench is going to go. So I think I'm going to start off at 155. And just kind of work my way up from there. 
55. Never good when you see someone towing a car with another car. Okay. So next we will do let's say 170. That seems kind of crazy to me. 210. I don't think I've ever seen one that high. At least not in a small engine. Now we're at 185. I was wondering why it was taking so much effort to take that off. And now we're just going to go to 210. Can I need to move this? There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to put the cam in, put the side on, and then we'll wrap the valves. Cleaned up the head. We're at top dead center now. Put the valves on the wire wheel a bit to clean them up. Uh, the exhaust is real bad. Well, the intake also wasn't pretty, but the exhaust definitely needed to be uh, lapped. Probably a long time ago. Potentially, we could have just gotten away with lapping the valves. But, it's not right. The engine was, was just too worn. Well, the valves, or the rings were, excuse me. That's just valve grinding compound. You can buy it on the line or in an auto parts store. Oh yeah, that's way better. It's like night and day difference. Yeah, okay. What you want to see is like an even gray line on both surfaces. And it needs to be free of anything like no black, no scrapes, no nothing. So far, the valve is good, and the seat looks good too. It is interesting to see the eyebrows are shaved off on this. I don't know if that's a Tecumseh thing, or someone did that. I don't understand why they would do that, if it, but I would understand why the manufacturer would. It's just a more efficient design. When you modify a Briggs, this is actually the same level as the exterior around it. And you shave that off to allow better flow. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one, and then we'll put the head on. So I don't know if I ever really showed this part in previous videos, I'll just do it now. This is a spring compressor for small engines. I think it's technically a Briggs and Stratton part, but works good for almost any uh, flathead. 
a little bit for the overhead valves, but mainly it's used for flatheads when you have a confined area to work in. Just compresses it, then the valve goes in there, then it rests in the centerpiece, the spring holds it in place, and that's it. So, just put it through. This particular style of keeper is not the easiest. There we go. And then to release it, you just unscrew it. And there you have it. Should be in place now. Don't have to worry about anything else. You just do that for both. This one's a lot easier just because it doesn't have that additional, um, I don't know, keeper, plate. Don't know what that is. But, yeah, and the number on this is number 19063. I think it's like 40 bucks. I don't remember. Um, I think I found mine on Facebook Marketplace, actually. But, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other side, and then we'll be done with the valves. So, you want to check the valve clearances. I forgot to mention that. I checked the intake. It's a 10 thousandths. According to the manual, that's fine. Uh, the exhaust, though, is at 8 thousandths. According to the, the recommendations from Tecumseh, excuse me, it's something significantly larger. Let me pull it back up again. For HM100, which is what this engine is, it says 0.203 to 0.305. So we are significantly over that. Um, so I need to grind down. Just take the valve out. Go to a bench grinder or somewhere that you can do a flat grind. You're not supposed to use the side of a bench grinder at pretty much any time. But you, this side of it would be a lot easier. Because then you don't have the natural curvature of the stone to worry about. Take off little bits and pieces. Put it back in, measure. If it's still not good, keep grinding. But you don't want to grind too much because to put it back on is really hard. You pretty much have to buy a new valve. You could weld on it, I suppose, but that's not in the realm of this video. So I'm going to take it out, grind it, we'll get the clearances right, and then I will put the head back on. Okay, so I looked up a different chart. The reason why it's such a big difference is because apparently the intake is measured in millimeters and the exhaust is measured in inches. So when pulling up the actual inch, it still was out of spec, but I just gave a real brief moment at the grinder and it's fine now. It's also a good idea to put a little oil on the springs. I just put a little bit of a motor oil, it's fine, uh, and the valve stem itself it kind of helps lubricate it when it's first starting up to make sure it doesn't wear it out prematurely because you know it's pretty dry right now we did do a lot of work to them so let's do the head it's very important to look up your exact torque spec i looked it up and it said 200 inch pounds so that's what we're going to be doing. Something to kind of look into is, I mean, I tried to clean the head. I don't know where my small wire brush is for my Dremel, but it's good enough. Cleaned it. This is an interesting little head. Um, the Briggs and Stratton's are a little bit different, but Kind of impressed by this engine, with the exception of having to work on it. There we go. Unfortunately, that moved our head gasket a little bit. go. 
just looking down the holes. So, 200 inch pounds. And if you remember, these came off in a very specific order. And luckily for me, I recorded it and have that very specific order. And apparently it's here, here, and here are these brass looking ones. The rest are just these normal. They're all equally length head bolts. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but it's probably more or less like best practice to uh, kind of buy new head bolts at least. At least that's what I do for larger engines, like motorcycles and whatnot. I'm just doing this so I don't have to like twist it all the way down. Still going to zigzag. Next, we're, I don't think I'm going to show, oh, I'll show a couple of them. Oh, I forgot one. Oops. But my torque wrench is set to 100 inch pounds. If you have a foot pound, just divided by 12. Then we just go like this, back and forth. The reason why you don't do it in a line is so you don't have uneven pressure, well, a lot of it, in one side before the other. Did I do this one? No. Should be all. And go up to about 100 and say 45. And I'm just going to do that same thing. Go up maybe in our 40, 185, and then go to 200, and we'll be done. I'm not going to bore you with that. So, in theory, it's almost done. Let's put our finger so we can feel any good compression going on there. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty decent. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, let's see. Step, probably put the cover on. Um, that's pretty easy. Not going to worry too much about that. Um, we'll put the cover for the generator on over here. Then we'll put the generator head on put it back on the frame, or probably put it on the frame and then do that. It's a lot lighter that way. Put all the way the tools so we have a little working space, and we're good. So just the exact opposite going, you know, off. Um, yeah, there's really not much more to go off on there, so I'm just going to put it back together. We will put a little oil in it. We'll see what we get, and fingers crossed it runs right. Okay, it's been a few hours later, and we're ready to go. 
put oil in it, plug in it, uh, filter's still good, put everything back together. I will say putting the bolt back into the feet on the generator side was a real pain. Um, also not going to lie, I take apart the, the shields a couple times because they go in a very specific order and I forgot one naturally because it's on the bottom of the pile. Of course, the one I needed to put on first was on last. I should look that way. Anyway, so I tweak the throttle a little bit. I don't want it to be too high. There's definitely a whole lot more compression. Let's give it a pull and see what happens. Good news, um, it runs it's completely low on engine speed. I'm going to crank it up a little bit and bring you back. Okay, got it uh, tuned in a little bit. I did not check the load though. I have a heat gun on there, 1800 watts. It's a little close to 40% of the total load it can do. When we did it last time, I don't remember, it went down to like 52 hertz or something really low and you can definitely hear the difference. Fingers crossed it runs and I think right now it's setting steady at like 61.2 61-ish. I tweaked a little bit after I got to that point just to make sure but it wasn't all that much. Um, let's give it a yank and see what happens. was exceedingly more than I expected. That's nice. That's really nice. I barely even heard a difference. I think it is running a little high though. I to put it back to where it was before because it... actually no I think I'll leave it. It's, it's well within there. It got down to like 61 or 60.8 under 1800 watts so it should be pretty good. Um, it'll probably get down to like 59 and a half, 59 uh, under pretty much a full capacity so yeah seems to run good um, no problems with it I'm happy with it this is one of those projects I thought it was going to be a carb clean and turned into a whole lot more projects but it was good to get it done sitting in my garage for a long time now I can go in someone else's garage and sit for a long time and then probably have to come back here to get fixed again but yeah so uh like I said, you didn't really miss much playing together, just putting it back together exactly the same way after you took it off. The only thing I forgot to show, I wish I would have, is when you put the rod back in after you attach the rotor. 
Uh, you do have to look up the spec on that one, so go online, look up your spec, and torque it down to your spec. Other than that, everything else is pretty good. Those, you don't want to be super loose or super tight. I think there's a spec on there, but I, it's really nothing that I was able to find, um, at least not for this one. But to be honest, I wasn't looking too hard. I just put it on so it's tight. They're lock nuts. Uh, they sunk everything together nice and tight, so it's good to go. I did pull it over with no plug in it three or four times and listen to see if there's anything scraping and there was nothing so you want to do that before you do any of this because if you hear scraping you're you can cause some serious damage and potentially harm yourself so be careful with that okay i'm going to clean it up a little bit more other than that it should be good if you have any questions comments or anything below leave a comment catch you on the next one definitely subscribe and put a thumbs up later